Good morning, that's us now for the second time. Uh, you are all very welcome to our morning service. Uh, it's good to see so many people have gathered in. I'm going to do the announcements uh, after after some of the boys are here. A lot of the boys are off today, some are away, boys and girls, and some of them are away camping, but uh, there's still some heading down to Sunday school, and that will be happening in a wee moment. And congratulations to all the boys and girls who got uh, their letters for their schools yesterday. Uh, it's just great to hear uh, that some of them are all excited about going to school. That will soon wear off once you get the first or second year, but anyway, uh, that initial excitement, it's good, it's good to have it. One announcement I do have to make before uh, people disappear is the quiz last night. Thank you to all who came and helped. It was a wonderful night. Great to see so many people gathered into the hall and uh, you raised over £450, so that was wonderful. And uh, again, thank you to George, our quiz master. Uh, I think we'll have to do another one at Christmas yes, yeah. because we were robbed, okay? <laughs> By one point. And if I had a guess the proper books of the Bible, we might have won. Okay, so anyway. Never ask the rector something just off the cuff like that because his mind can go blank very easily. But I want to say that the winners have been very humble because they've all wore their medals to church this morning. I got worried when Esther started to undo her outer garments, but it was just to show me her, her, her medal. And, uh, and, and then they sent me a picture to show that they won. So the Clangers won last night. So round of applause for them. Okay, but again, it was a great night's fun. If you're visiting with us for the first time this morning, you are very, very welcome. After the service, we move down towards the hall. Well, actually, we move into the hall for, for tea and coffee. Best coffee and ballet lesson. You can tell I've had a couple of cups already this morning, so it's going to be a very fast sermon. Uh, but uh, it's just. But this is Rogation Sunday. You're probably wondering what is he talking about. But who all normally goes to church, or if you don't come here, regularly, celebrates harvest. Most of us celebrate harvest, but we forget about the other end of the year, which is actually blessing the seed and blessing the harvest that is to come. So that is what Rogation is all about. I'll talk a bit more about it during our sermon. Ryan preached at our half nine service this morning, so you basically stole all my good points. So I'm glad you're going out to Sunday school. So that's excellent, but uh, that's what we're doing this morning. But before we stand to worship, we're actually going to sing We Plow the Fields and Scatter to open our service together because it talks about the seed time and blessing that. I want to pray this prayer that was set before us for Regation Sunday. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good gifts as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which succeed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to stand and worship, reply, the fields and sky. Hymn 47 in the hymn book, but the words will be on the screen. We plow the fields and sky, the good seed on the land, but it is fed
sing that lot of harvest time because sometimes we miss those important verses it says we thank thee for this seed time which is this time of the year and then when the crops grow towards harvest uh, now instead of confession this morning well we are going to have confession but Ryan you're going to lead us in it is that correct hopefully you're going to come and do it now okay. yes brilliant if you don't know Ryan, Ryan is our new uh, community pastor and uh, he's been with us now. This is your third Sunday? I believe so. I believe so. And we haven't kicked him out yet, so he's doing something right. But i hand over to you. <laughs> well, hopefully I'm doing something right. Um, right, so, so this morning with confession, I, I thought we would do it maybe a little bit different. Um, because oftentimes we say the prayer and while we fully mean it. Uh, maybe sometimes we can use symbols or actions to to dig deeper. And so this is an all-age confession, and what I'm going to need you to do is, when I ask you to do a couple of different things, uh, that you follow along and, and do those with me. Why do we confess? We know that God is love, and that God loves all that he has made. We know that he loves you, and he loves me, and that Jesus showed us this by his life, and he tells us in his own words, that God will never turn against anyone or turn anyone away who comes to him. But we know that our lives are far from perfect, don't we? We know that we miss the mark and the things that we say and the things that we do, the actions that we participate in or that we don't participate in. And so we come and we pray and we ask the Lord to forgive us because he said he will. So what I would like for us to do is uh, there's a a couple of actions as we pray. So I, I wonder if you might make a fist with me. Right? And you look at your fist. What do you think of when, when you make a fist? Usually it's for anger. You make a fist in anger. So why don't you hold a fist as we begin our prayer of confession today? We make a fist. Lord, we are sorry for the times that we have gotten angry with other people. And wanted to strike out. Now point away from yourself. Your index finger. Point, point away. Lord, we are sorry for the times that we have blamed others and seen things that are wrong in others without recognizing how much is also wrong in us. Now close your hand and hold it close to your chest. Lord, we are sorry for the times we have kept things selfishly to ourselves and have not been prepared to give to those who need our help. Now put your hand over your mouth. Father, we are sorry for the foolish words that we have spoken which have hurt other people and ourselves. Now take your hand and put it over your eyes. Lord, we are sorry that we have deliberately chosen not to see the good things that we have, could have done to help other people or for the things that we have deliberately looked at knowing that they are harmful to us and to others. And put your hand over your ear. Father, we are sorry for the times that we have not listened to the cries of those who are poor or suffer injustice, or for not listening to those who might be in authority over us, like our mums and our dads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and forgive us. Jesus says, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. 
So Lord, we bring all that we are to you, our sins, our failure to love. We thank you that you died for us so that we might be forgiven and be able to start a new life in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I think, and whoever's here, boys and girls, are going to head towards Sunday school. Isn't that correct? Excellent. There's some down there already. Brilliant. Go ahead. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements uh, to keep you posted this morning. Uh, food bank. We're still collecting for the food bank. Uh, the, in the foyer, as you come in, if you're not familiar, there is a trolley there. Top tray is for the food bank. And then on the bottom tray, we're also collecting for Ukraine. There's quite specific items there. Uh, and uh, again, they're all being taken to the food bank in, uh, in, in Lisburn, who cover this area and indeed then pass them on to the Green Bear uh, charity. So that is the food bank. Uh, limited fund, again, we, we hear the news about inflation and about the cost of living soaring. Uh, we have, uh, uh, through generous donations, uh, some funds available to help those who are maybe suffering from fuel poverty, those who maybe just can't make ends meet in, in this community. And, and if you know of anybody, please be very discreet. Come and speak to us, uh, speak to myself or, or Carson, or uh, just try and keep it minimal and we, we will see what we can do uh, to help uh, them as well. Now, pray, prayer meeting is uh, our, our pray, praying station, as we call it, is here at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. If, you can, uh, if you're free on a Wednesday morning, please uh, come along uh, and join with us. There's usually coffee and there's a little bit of a chat, but we also pray for the community and, and just those who are in need. Now the Jubilee weekend's coming up. If you have noticed on the way into the hall this morning, uh, there is a banner up for the event that's taking place up on Jumbo. It's a Jumbo Orange Hall. Uh, they're closing the street off. Um, and uh, there's a tea party, fancy dress, bouncy castles, everything else. If you can pop along to it, please do that. It's a free event, but it's to celebrate the Jubilee. And then back here on the Sunday at 11, we're having a service of celebration for the, the Queen and uh, we're going to have a big free lunch afterwards. Uh, so if you know of anybody that you want to invite along to church, please do that and then we're down to the hall afterwards and, and, and the Bally Lesson Band are going to be providing music for us as well. So that's what's happening. We've already had a great fundraiser last night and there's a couple more coming up. We're going to try a car boot sale, so Saturday the 11th of June, that's giving you a couple of weeks to get all your, I was going to say junk, but I'm sure it's top quality items together uh, and bring along to the car boot sale. There will be a charge per car, but if you don't want to do that and you may have stuff you would like to donate to the church that could be sold, uh, please, uh, Agnes or I think uh, who else is here this morning? All right, Agnes is saying no Sandra, okay. Oh, both of you, okay. See them, we can't take any electrical items, okay. If you do have a spare jacuzzi, you can leave it up the rectory. But apart from that, uh, please do that. And then we have our coffee morning, uh, our starting, we're starting up again, and it's on Saturday, the 18th of June, uh, and it's half 10 to 12 midday. Can I just say thank you again to all who organise, and to all who are organising uh, the events in the future. It's really good to see life coming back in to the community. And if you're visiting with us and, and, and you're wondering what all this fundraising is about, pre-COVID we had some great plans that were put on hold. We have an extension uh, plan for the side of the church here. Uh, don't worry, we're not knocking down any walls, but it's just giving us an extra space. We used to have coffee after 11 o'clock up here, so that will, uh, that will help us with that and putting on accessible toilets just at the side of the church here. So we're fundraising just to, just to build that up. And then also for the community space at the hall, uh, that will be the first thing that, that, that sort of kicks off. It's where we're putting containers in for a cafe and uh, a covered in open air space. And so that's what we're raising funds for. There is funding available, but we also, as a church, need to be able to uh, raise some funding for that as well. So thank you to everybody. It's quite appropriate to be speaking about that 
as we are on Regation Sunday when we think about blessing and asking for God's blessing on the church. And if you're visiting with us today, we're not always asking for money. Very rarely do we ask for money, but anyway, we are sort of entering into a new phase of fundraising. So we're going to continue with our service and uh, we have our first Bible reading now. The reading is taken from Joel, chapter 2, 21 to 27. Do not be afraid, land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, you wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. Here ends the reading. Amen. Thank you. Did you wear your medal to the front? You're very humble. At least that's one of your team, but that's good. Amen. Uh, we're going to, uh, this is another uh, wonderful song. It's an old hymn, it's uh, sort of been redone, but, but we're going to stand together uh, and we're going to sing uh, this beautiful hymn. But it, com- it says, talks about coming by fount of every blessing. Will you please stand? <laughs> Come on, find of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loveless praise. Teach me some melodious song, song my flaming tongues above. Praise the mud and fix the Taken from John chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. 
Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sandra, for bringing us our gospel reading. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word read to us today. Lord, we thank you for the hymns of praise that we have sung. And Lord, as we uh, move through this time of year, Lord, in this season where we ask for your blessing, Lord, we pray that our hearts and minds may be open to hear from you. Amen. Amen. Now, I, as I said, uh, today is Regation Sunday. And I always joke, I, I've been ordained over 15 years now, I, but most of you will know that I grew up in the Elam Church. And really, uh, we didn't really go through the seasons the way that we do uh, here in our church and here in the Church of Ireland. But there's a real richness to actually following through the season as we worship together, as we move through the year together, it's important that we recognise God in everything and every tiny little thing that matters in our lives. Our, our, our two Bible readings this morning are, are, are linked and they're linked because God again is saying and leaving a promise. God was promising the people of Israel restoration. He was promising to restore the years that they had lost. He was promising that the wilderness would be green again. And then Jesus in this New Testament passage, and actually John 14 is very familiar. We would use the first few verses of it normally during a funeral service. But here Jesus was preparing his followers and his disciples. He was preparing them for a time in which he would no longer be with them but he was leaving them with a promise. And that promise was the advocate, the Holy Spirit. Now, I know we had a bit of fun earlier this morning, Jimmy and I, when we were talking about which Sunday is this in the liturgical calendar. Is that right, Jimmy? And he corrected me. He was wrong and I was wrong, but we got there in the end. But anyway, uh, today is technically the sixth Sunday of Easter, the fifth Sunday after Easter Day. So I'm completely confusing you. You get your socks off and count, do a bit of counting. And then this week is Ascension Day on the Thursday. And we also remember that on Sunday. And then the following Sunday on the Queen's Jubilee is Pentecost. And so we can see as we move through the scriptures, it's moving in time with the seasons. But I, I, I love this picture of the phase around us up at the Giant's Ring very early in the morning. And the fields are being made ready. They are being ploughed and they are being seeded for harvest. They are being seeded for a time which growth. They are being tended and they are being looked after. And it's a beautiful, beautiful time of the year. But Regation Sunday is perhaps a tradition that had slipped away and now is coming back again. And it sort of starts three days of fasting before Ascension Day. Prayer and fasting in the old church, they would have had a service of celebration as we are today, and then they would have fasted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they would have celebrated Christ ascending into heaven on Thursday. Now you know me, I love my grub, so I'm not so much that into the fasting, but there's a real powerful 
thing to be gleaned from it. But also on our creation Sunday, we talked about this last year, was feeding of the bounds. Do you remember this when we talked about it? Ryan talked about it a wee bit more this morning. And basically, in, in olden days, in, in old times, when Jimmy was young, Jimmy, I'm giving you a hard time this morning. Do you know why? It's because I know he can hear me this morning. He's a bit of new battery on his hearing aid. But anyway, feeding of the bounds is where, it's an old tradition of where, of the rector or the minister in charge of a parish, the community would have got together and they would have walked right round the boundary of their parish. And every so often there would have been a, a marker post or a boundary post that they would have stopped and that they would have said a prayer at. And it was a way of getting the community together. It was a way of getting people who didn't really see each other together uh, out for a bit of a dander. Now we have a big, big parish and it would probably take us quite a while to get round it. I, and I know some of that, I think it's uh, Ryan said this morning that St. Mark's in Belfast, they still do this tradition of walking around their parish boundaries and praying for a real blessing upon it. And, and so this is last year's picture of the boundary around the rectory fields. And this is this year's picture. Easter slightly later this year. But do you notice anything about the two pictures? Go back, Willie. What's the difference? It's greener, okay. But the path is a wee bit more kept, doesn't it? So I've been cheating. I've been riding, riding around on the lawnmower, cutting the path down. And you've probably seen me, if you're past the field someday, you'll see me trying to run around the, the boundary of the rectory fields. But there's a real spiritual significance in doing something like this. Now, we don't have to do the physical act of walking around, but it's important that we pray for our community, that we invoke God's blessing upon it. And, and this time of year is a wonderful time whenever we can invoke the blessing of God and refresh our hearts and our minds to mission. It, it, it's funny, just a couple of weeks ago I we was speaking to somebody in, in, in the parish and we were, we were talking about revival and, and uh, there, there's an interesting sort of discussion. I think we, we have revival here but we don't have this outpouring and this massive revival that we are expecting as the church. And sometimes we can get lazy. We can just sit back and just keep asking God for revival to be poured out with actually physically not doing anything, without actually actively praying for people whom we know, who we, who we know need God in their life. So this morning I want to encourage you to ask, to ask God to pour into someone else's life the power of the Holy Spirit. To ask this morning for God to come afresh on you, to fill you and to equip you for the season ahead. I'm getting slightly excited and it's not the coffee. But as we come out of this pandemic, as we, as we see things returning to normality, that we as the church have a real opportunity. We have a real opportunity to show people the real Jesus. Not just the religious Jesus, not just the ones, the one that people see and make fun of, but to see a Jesus who is alive and who is within each one of us. And so it's important that as we look at what Regation Sunday means, that Ryan was very fancy this morning and we used it last year. Regation comes from the Latin regair, okay, which means simply to ask. And it comes, us Christians are brilliant at hijacking other festivals. It comes from an old Roman festival where they used to go out at the start of the year to ask for God's blessing on the fields or God, the God's blessing on the fields around them. So we must ask for blessing. We must ask for blessing each day in our lives. Because so easily we can forget. We can just let life just overtake us and we can forget just to stop for a moment and ask for God 
to bless us. Ask for God to bless us as individuals. Ask for God to bless our families. You say some of us, some of our families need loads of blessing, don't they? But to bless our families. Ask God to bless our neighbours. Ask God, which is the most difficult one, to bless the people we don't really like. Now, I know you love everybody, but it's important to ask for that blessing. And why? Joel, I picked this little phrase up out of the book of Joel uh, that was read to us this morning. It says, the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. It's a time of preparation. And as these pastures become green, we as people and as a church must be ready to reap the harvest. It's okay for the fields to become green, but they need to be tended and they need to be looked after. I know perhaps there's maybe a few of you here from the farming community and things have been really tough. Just speaking to the farmer who looks after the field at the rectory, the, the, the price of fertilizer and the price of everything else uh, has become extortionate. But they need those things to be able to tend the field and produce the crop. There's a real good, strong analogy for us. We need Jesus in our life day and daily to produce a crop, to harvest the fields. And when revival is poured out on all flesh, that we are there and we are ready to point them towards Christ. I love this. Jesus, Jesus is preparing the disciples for a time in which he is leaving, but that he is returning. And he says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. And that's not a big, heavy stick to beat us with. That's not a big, heavy stick to beat the church with. It's not a big, heavy stick for me to use to say, if you don't obey God's teaching, you don't love him. But Jesus says it with a real sense of compassion. If you love me, you will obey my teaching. If you love me, you will pray a blessing on your family. If you love me, you will pray for a blessing on your community and indeed those around you. That little prayer um, is, is, is very interesting, but this particular prayer that we have in, in, in the old prayer book, if we were using uh, the old service this morning, it says, your son has chosen us and called us to be his friends. So give us grace to keep his commandments, to love one another, and to bear fruit which will abide through him who is the true vine and the source of all life. You know, there's a great depth to the prayers that we find in our prayer book. And indeed, as we look at this, it's important that we have that love. As I said, there's a theme following through from last week and over these next few weeks of looking at God's commandments. Another little prayer that, that, that normally we have set aside for this service, and as Jesus talked to the disciples in John, there's a very famous passage of scripture from Matthew that talks about asking. And if you're a good old Sunday school goer and you were younger, you would probably rhyme this off and you could rhyme it off and you'd probably rhyme it off in the King James version, isn't that right? He's all still awake? Must be very heavy this morning. But anyway, but we're going to finish with this in person. Thank goodness, okay? We're going to finish with this. Because as we think about asking God's blessing on uh, the community, Jesus quite simply said to us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, 
The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. We just can't sit on our backsides, sit on our hands, and do nothing. We have an individual responsibility to ask, to seek, and to knock. So we're going to pray, but as we pray, we're going to, uh, just as Ryan, I thought that was quite powerful this morning, uh, the confession with the movements, it made us really think about it. Uh, and so we're going to just use a short form of prayers, which hopefully you will respond uh, with the print that's in yellow. Uh, but we're going to use these prayers as we ask for God's blessing. And then I have just a few short prayers uh, towards the end. So for the riches of your creation, giving us the materials of the earth, we thank you, Lord. For the labor of our hands and minds, developing invention and skill, we thank you, Lord. For agriculture, industry and commerce, providing work and wealth and goods for the world, we thank you, Lord. For all who work in transport and distribution service, industries and local government, that in giving service they may find reward. Hear our prayer. For the unemployed and the handicapped, that they might not lose hope and may find a positive role in life. Hear our prayer. For young people at work and those who educate and train them, that they may find promise and aspiration fulfilled. Hear our prayer. Lord, the Creator, whose great goodness has provided for our needs. Help us so to use, develop and preserve the resources of the earth, that through our industry, the needs of all may be fulfilled, human dignity enhanced, and our people live in true prosperity and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so God, our Father, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was content to share the life of his village in Nazareth. We ask you to bless the life of this community of Ballylesson and the whole parish of Drumbo. We pray for all who live in this place, for all who work here, for all who regard this place as home, wherever they may live now, and for all who simply pass through. May your blessing rest upon us all as we live together in your peace. We pray in the name of Jesus, our peace. Amen. And I just want to pray just, short, uh, just for a short moment for those who are in need. And so, Lord, we come before you. We pray for your blessing to be poured out on all who are in this church and who are maybe watching online this morning. And as we do so, Lord, we just want to lift before you we Jess. Lord, we thank you for her, Lord, for her enthusiasm. And Lord, just as she uh, goes for this little operation tomorrow, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you will be with her, that you will bless her, Lord, and that she will just be healed and restored, Lord, uh, again. Lord, we pray for Pamela and Jack, Lord, and Toby at this time, and uh, Lord, that you will indeed be a real blessing to them. And so, Lord, we continue, Lord, to pray for those who are in hospital recovering. Lord, we pray for Etta and for Billy. Lord, may they know your presence. Lord, may they be aware of the love that comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. And so, Lord, we give you thanks indeed, Lord, for for, for all our young people. Lord, perhaps, Lord, for those who were disappointed, Lord, by what, what school they got yesterday, Lord, but may they know, Lord, your blessing upon them. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, for this land. Lord, we pray for uh, continued peace, Lord. We pray for wisdom. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that your will may be done. And so, Lord, we sum up all our prayers and blessings in the words that you have taught us. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for joining with us this morning. Don't forget, if you see somebody new, uh, ha have a chat to them, speak to them, and welcome them, and uh, join with us uh, for a, a cup of coffee afterwards. We're going to sing this beautiful song just as we thank God for the things that he has given us and as we look forward to a real kind of blessing. There is our Redeemer. Will you please stand? There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One, thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son, and leave